this is the last video in the series going over the full teardown, cleanup, and maintenance of your version 2 AEG. Check out my previous videos on teardown, Titan MOSFET installation, and the Dental Floss mod. With the gun taken apart, you'll first want to clean every component starting with the gearbox shell. Grease tends to attract and hold on to grit. You need to clean it all off before you regrease to make sure you're really cleaning the problem away. I usually use disposable shop towels to get rid of the bulk of the grease. Wipe down both halves of the gearbox shell. Check the gearbox shell corners for cracking. If you haven't already radius them, do that now. I also do a second round with q-tips just to clean out any of the tighter grooves or edges. You probably don't need to use any special cleaners, but you could apply a small amount of rubbing alcohol to get a deeper clean. Just want to avoid rubbing alcohol going directly on any seals, o-rings, rubber. Using a similar process, I clean all the compression components including the inside and outside of the cylinder, the nozzle, piston including a teeth, and the piston o-ring. Check the nozzle for wear or nozzle for damage and try to shine a light down the nozzle to visually look at the o-ring. Confirm that the cylinder head tip and the cylinder head o-rings are in good shape. Check your cylinder itself for any scratches or damage. If you've corrected AOE on the cylinder head side, then confirm the AOE correction still glued well. Check the tapping plate fin for abnormal wear or rounding. As you take out the piston, observe the teeth and the rack for signs of pullout, loosening, or wear. Especially the pickup tooth, just make sure it's not worn. Make sure the piston head's not coming loose. If it is, just tighten the screw. You could also use Loctite. Check your O-rings and seals visually to make sure they appear in good shape. Check to see if they have any signs of flattening on the edges, and if they're worn, just replace them. Rubber may harden with old age, so if they're not really that soft or pliable, then just replace them. As you clean each of the gears, try to wipe off all the grease, and inspect each tooth for signs of excessive wear, uneven wearing, broken teeth, or other gear or defective damage. Check out the bearings on your gearbox, and also bearings on your spring guide if you have them. Make sure none of the bearings are loose or popped off. Bearings shouldn't sound crunchy, rattly, or be too loose. I'd recommend to steal epoxy the bearings or bushings down to the gearbox shell. Make sure this is accounted for in your shimming and don't do this after you've already shimmed. Otherwise, you have to reconfirm shimming of your gearbox. Be sure to wipe down the shims to get any grit or grease off both faces. Don't forget to track which face and which gear each of your shims came off during this process. Now would be a great time to install a MOSFET, run new wiring, or shim the gearbox if you had to. I go through the steps for Titan MOSFET installation by separate video. Be sure to check that out. You can apply a fresh gearbox grease using a small paintbrush or two toothpick and spread the grease around all moving parts. I'm using a modified gearbox grease which is a fairly heavy synthetic grease. It's good for steel to steel or even hard plastic components. A lot of people tend to use super lube grease for this. Generally you want to avoid petroleum based products. Apply the grease to all sliding or contact metal parts including piston teeth, gear teeth, bushings or bearing and shim surfaces. You also want to check the motor pinion and clean and grease that as well. Reinstall all the components after you've greased. Avoid applying grease or heavy grease to O-rings. Instead, use a silicone oil. Always avoid any grease or any oil in the bucking. For oils, I'll typically use 100% silicone oil of various weights. I will also typically put a small dab of medium weight silicone oil on the cylinder head tip and then spread it around with the nozzle. This will lubricate the O-ring between the nozzle and the cylinder head. The oil coating should be very light and thin to avoid having excess oil enter the nozzle. This is the first time I'm trying this, but I'll be using the Lonex Cylinder Lube. The cylinder lube will help keep the barrier between the cylinder and piston head O-ring sealed and sliding smoothly. Before we close up the gearbox shell, we want to double check the compression seal. You can easily check the seal between the cylinder head, cylinder and piston head O-ring by pressing your fingertip on the tip of the cylinder and cycling the piston. You'll know when you get a good seal because you can retain a solid pressure, which will mean the cylinder head is trying to push itself out. You also want to check the seal with the nozzle installed. The best and easiest way to do this before you close the gearbox is to set up the nozzle and the tappet plate. You want to have the tappet plate and nozzle extended into the forward cycle position to confirm the seal. If you put the nozzle on and test it flattened down to the cylinder, you're not really checking the actual nozzle air seal. Reinstall the compression components. Make sure to cycle the sector gear back to avoid having any tension on the tappet as you install the spring. You may notice the anti-reversal latch on this build stays in place without actually having to hold it. This is a great feature of the modified anti-reversal latch. Its unique spring design allows it to stay upright without being held. As you install the trigger with an optical MOSFET such as the Gate Titan, you want to make sure you keep the trigger held steady with one hand or a free thumb. Place the second gearbox shell half over and embrace your inner artist to fight the spring back in place. Spring installation is probably the trickiest part of the whole process, provided your anti-reversal latch hasn't fallen over the whole time. Just make sure to keep downwards pressure on the cylinder and piston to help guide the spring down and inside the gearbox. Don't forget to tighten all the gearbox screws. Reinstall the selector plate. With the gate tightened, the selector plate spring cutoff lever are now removed so the selector plate may fit loosely until it's in the lower receiver. Insert the gearbox into the lower receiver. Secure the gearbox with a trigger retainer pin and large rear retainer pin.
Run the wiring up to the rear and install the sling plate, buffer tube, and buffer tube screw. Having this long slot cut out helps me see the washer and bolt placement down the buffer tube shaft. Tighten the buffer tube castle nut, and if you have it, use a bow wrench tool to ensure it's extra secure. This will help keep tension on the buffer tube screw to avoid it loosening over time. Run your wiring through your grip and install your motor grip screws. Usually you'll have two to reinstall. Install your motor, just make sure to match the motor and polarity to the wiring color. When you insert the motor and connect the wiring, just make sure the motor still springs back and forth with gentle pressure. If you try to push down on the motor and it's stuck or binding, then your wiring has probably gotten in the way, so try reinserting the motor and wiring again. Install the two motor plate screws on the rear. Install your mag catch and the bull catch. The bull catch has to be hooked under the gearbox shell, so install it with a bit of a sweeping motion. That completes the maintenance of the lower half assembly. Next we'll go to the upper half, which is really inner barrel and hop up maintenance. To clean the inner barrel, tear thin strips off a shop towel or something as lint free as possible. Wrap the fabric around the slot in your barrel cleaning jamming rod. Run the cleaning rod down the barrel the full length with a slight twisting motion. Just be sure not to catch the hop on the ends. You can lower your hop up down or you can actually just remove it first. Repeat this process with new towels or strips until there's no dirt showing on them. If you really want a deep clean, you can rub rubbing alcohol or actually silicone oil onto the towel and do the same process. But at the end you want to make sure that you run multiple dry towels through just to make sure that any excess oil is removed if you do use oil. For this process, if you were to use a cleaning solution or oil, just make sure the hop up and rubber is out for that. I'll also clean off the inside of the bucking with a q-tip just in case any dirt or debris ended up inside. You want to avoid applying oils or grease to the bucking itself. If you haven't already checked out my video on the Dental Floss mod, now's the time to do it. You can apply this mod to gain a bit of extra FPS with little effort. Reinstall the bucking and barrel, mining the orientation which is guided by the barrel C-clip. Don't forget the barrel stabilization ring and don't lose the hop-up spring. Reinstall your barrel. If your dust cover popped off during the removal process, be sure to reinstall it with its spring if you care for it. Honestly, those things are just more annoying than good in airsoft. As you slide the upper receiver onto the lower shell, just make sure you mind the charging handle which might catch on the top nub of the gearbox shell. To avoid it catching, just before you slide it back all the way, gently pull up and pull back on the charging handle to clear the nub. Don't pull too hard back on the charging handle because you can easily overstretch the spring. Lastly, let's check the chrono results. Before working on this gun, it chrono about 350 FPS on 0.2 gram BBs. That was after a half a season of hard use with thousands of rounds going through it. After good cleaning and maintenance, we're seeing about 410 FPS on 0.2 gram BBs. This post maintenance FPS is pretty consistent every time I tech this gun. I usually do this maintenance two or three times a year just to make sure it's in top working shape.